It's actually good to shoot videos at home because that gives you a reason to clean up. Filming videos at home is a bit different as filming travel videos, for example, because when you go traveling, you want to show a lot of what's going on around you and what you see, but when filming at home, your surrounding is far less interesting. So at home, it's really about you or other characters and what you, what you or the others are doing, and that makes storytelling a lot more important. So how do you tell stories at home? To tell stories at home, you should start by writing a script, because that helps to organize your thoughts and defines what you want to capture. Start with a simple outline, including the beginning beginning, middle and end, or what I also refer to as problem, solution and outcome, because that is essentially what beginning, middle and end means. And I know that sounds complicated, but just start with this basic structure and you will be able to write a basic script in no time. I will also give you a little example in a second. Now, once you have a script, make a shot list. This is a simple table that lists the shots together with the shooting location and the shot number. These two things are really important, especially the shot number. And organizing your shots in advance will save time and ensure that you capture all the necessary footage. In the sequence that you just saw in the beginning, I introduced the problem of my house being too messy to record a video. Then I solved the problem by cleaning up, which is the solution. And at the end, you see me recording a video in a clean room, which shows the outcome. So there you see the basic structure. That's my example here. So that was my script. And starting from there, I just had to plan the shots I wanted to get for each part to tell the story. It was actually quite easy then to shoot. And if you want to learn more about storytelling, script writing, and planning your shots, I made another video about that which I will link in the description below or also here in the top corner there you will find it and there you will learn more about all of that stuff. Now let's talk about framing. The placement of your subject and the camera can greatly impact your shots. So when placing the subject, there are the standard rules such as the rule of thirds or placing the subject in the center of the frame, etc. But these rules are actually talked so much about and are also broken quite often in a good way that I want you to focus more on interesting camera angles like lower or higher angles to add visual interest. In a shot of our sequence that you see right now, I purposefully use the edge of my bed to point towards the door and that's called a leading line in photography what works really good for framing and that leads the attention of the viewer towards the door but as the door is out of focus which I also did intentionally the viewers focus is at first on the jeans hanging from my bed so the viewer knows instantly that the room is cluttered but he still gets that I entered the room because it's also clearly visible Another example is the shot from inside the bin where I put a GoPro inside to get an interesting angle. That's why a GoPro should probably be your first camera. It's so flexible. You've probably seen similar shots before. It's quite standard as well, but it's always an interesting angle that's that gets the attention of the viewer a little bit more because it's just something different. So these basic rules, rule of thirds, for example, still count. You should also use them, but I think you heard about that before, so I don't have to mention that again. I want you to focus on interesting angles that really make the audience think like, wow, this is actually cool. You don't need to do that in every shot, then it also gets lost a bit. But if you place two, three shots um, somewhere in your sequence, depending on how long it is, of course, that always can make a huge difference. Let's also talk about focus. You should not always use autofocus because you can also draw the attention by focusing on certain subjects. And a good example is this shot here where I focus on the clutter while I'm leaving the room in the background. The shot perfectly shows that I leave the room but the clutter is still there. So the viewer knows that I didn't do anything about the problem yet. So in this shot I used manual focus because I wanted the focus to stick on the can in the foreground. And otherwise the camera would likely focus on me or jump in between. This is not what I want. And I would generally say that it's better to use manual focus when shooting at home a lot more because that gives you a lot more control but you don't actually have to manually focus by pulling the ring all the time on your lens. To do that, you can simply use single point autofocus wherever you will stand or the focus should be and then switch the camera to manual focus with the switch on your lens or by assigning a button to pause the autofocus. If it's hard to focus where you stand right now or maybe where another object or so will be in the future, then there's also a simple technique. You just place another object where you will stand, you focus on that, then you remove the object again 
again and you can stand there or you can walk in the shot later and then the focus will stick there. It's also for manual focus, of course. It is a bit easier to do with another person, your partner, a friend or someone, because then the other one can already focus while you stand there. So that obviously makes it a bit easier, but if you shoot by yourself, then it works that you simply place an object there or you focus on something that has the same distance. Next, let's talk about lighting and at first window light because window light can actually be a beautiful and natural light source and it's free. And to use window light properly, do what I'm doing right now, get close to a window, but from a perspective where the window or the window light throws shadows over your face, as you can see right now, and then use these shadows to create a three-dimensional look. Like you can see here right now, we have everything white, then here, beside my nose it's dark and here it's it's bright again and then it gets dark again that gives this three-dimensional look and what also helps with window light is a $10 reflector like that one here that bounces a bit of light back on your face so the dark side doesn't get too dark I would say right now it's pretty good and by the way also using big windows is always better than using small windows and you can even stand a little bit farther away I'm like around half a meter from the light right now from the window so if you have a room with big windows then use that for other shots it's good to have some sort of studio light that you can quickly move around and for that I recommend using a compact yet powerful light such as the Zion F100 which is also the sponsor of today's video this light will give you more control over the lighting and make your footage look professional because it is actually really powerful despite of the size in the last shot for example I used the F100 to make myself a bit brighter because the window light alone didn't do a good job and I also used the F100 light in the shots at the beginning of the sequence for the same reason. The F100 runs at up to 100 watt, what is a lot, and the reason actually why it works so good in such situations, plus it's super easy to set up and carry around. In the shot in the kitchen, I didn't have a strong window light at all, so there I also used the F100 light on my face, and luckily my fridge stands next to the door, so I didn't even have to bring a tripod, and that is actually something that I really love about this light. It's so flexible, you can use this little tripod to put it wherever you want, but you can also mount it on a big tripod if you have to for certain shots. With the giant light. Without the giant light. Finally, it's also important to say that you can't always get it perfect. The white shot in my room, for example, didn't work with backlighting because the whole background would have been blown out. So in this case, I had to break the backlighting rule and that is okay, story comes first. Finally, let's talk about adding camera motion. The cheap way of doing that is to just film in 4K or higher resolution and with a wider focal length as you finally want for the shot. And that ensures that you can crop in during the edit and animate the shot with keyframes or if you want to zoom, the dynamic zoom effect in DaVinci Resolve. Now, while these simple and cheap ways of adding motion to your shots can do a lot, it's better to record the motion in camera by using a camera slider if you have the budget. And that that makes the camera movements look more realistic and therefore enhance the quality of your video. The camera slider that I personally use is the Gipon Micro 3, 3 slider and it actually does an excellent job. So to bring all of that together, always remember the key element when shooting at home is a strong focus on the story and the people and to do so plan everything in advance and think about how you can incorporate what you've just learned into this video. And if you want to learn more about storytelling in your videos, check out this video here in the corner, there you will learn more. And I also have a full course on how to tell better stories in YouTube videos, which you will find in the description below. And also if you found this video helpful please leave me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I would say happy filming.